this is where we started, actually. This is where it got going. And um, this is a piece that was, I guess, it's like about good two and a half years old. And um, I call them trees. I mean, it seems like no one ever actually saw trees. <laughs> But it's like, okay, here it is. It's like, a, a, and then from there, uh, uh, um, realizing that like uh, tree parts, you know, could actually um, bring about this, this energy, you know? In the beginning, it was just pretty much just these um, silhouettes, you know? Of actual artworks, you know, that I've made in the past. And then from there, it was just a matter of making, creating a, this core beginnings, right? It's a, a core. And it's like just made up like all these like metal and wood parts and, yeah. And so I was going home and um, just really raiding um, my pile of like uh, a material and just like, you know, just we went from metal to uh, 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 tiny um, capillary roots to uh, wooden bits. And like uh, 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 from that point, it was just like, you know, a matter of just like creating these like uh, what I felt were could be a, um, effective centers uh, for these um, embalsings. You know, I was uh, doing an exhibition in um, San Francisco and uh, the uh, gallery told me that they had um, a space in Napa Valley where I could actually go and rip up you know, trees. And so they even supplied me with the bulldozers and, and, uh, and, and I went there for two uh, summers to sort of like, just like rip up trees and ship them back to uh, New York. And from there, I mean, these are some of the parts from that very scavenging. And like, um, in the actual sculptures, I was using the uh, tree parts. But in the uh, end, for what we're doing here, photographing and um, then um, silhouetting, you know, the, uh, the actual parts, and then, you know, like etching them onto the uh, 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 plates. We went from like attaching wood to like an aluminum back to like finding that etching into the actual plywood, you know, really attacking it will give us, you know, really something really interesting, you know. And here it is. This is the, uh, actually the startup or the core for that one. I almost like dreaded coming here because it would pull me out of the studio and now you're into, you have to flip your head into something else and you have to, and it's not like I could half ass it, you know, I have to sort of like be fully um, involved if I'm going to be making work. As I'm sort of like now sort of like slowing down and sort of saying, okay, I'm realizing that what's going on in the studio now has been influenced by what's happened here. I mean, there's like uh, things that are being made of aluminum now. Um, we started doing, like, uh, uh, before I started working in the studio with the, the aluminum, we were doing works here that were uh, uh, made of uh, um, uh, silver. And so, and, and, and blue became also uh, another thing that's now, uh, you know, been introduced into, like, the works in the studio. I mean, the, the color is not something that usually shows up in my work. So, and it's pretty obvious that this kind of, like, started something else, you know. And the line work that's going on in here, the, the embossed line that's going on in here, up against the kind of um, silhouetting that's going on in here, and the fogging, I mean, it's just like everything's there. I mean, from painting to drawing to sculpture. They, really, the most mind-boggling thing is that you guys are able to keep up. <laughs> he can come in and attack a process like very few people I've ever worked with. We started making very small pieces with him. We made about 50 small pieces using lots of different techniques so he could decide what was interesting to him and what wasn't. And what we were constantly amazed by was his ability to sort of capture what you're doing and then take it home, think about it, come back in the next day with uh, a new problem for you to solve. These are the very deeply etched magnesium plates that we started with based on his images. So what you see in here is a form of a root system and you also see the residual pigment that we've used from it going through the process many times.
this. So we used two different silver pigments, which is why these things look almost like silver foil. And it's actually ground metal particles that are suspended in, a, in some kind of diffusing liquid. And we brush it on very thickly onto one of his wooden matrixes. And then we couche, we transfer couche sheet down onto it and press it. So we get this beautiful, slightly torn object with a lot of dimension that becomes part of one of the addition pieces. We will start with buckets of white cotton and we'll dump them into this deco box right here and then release the water so it will form itself into a sheet. And then we'll directly pigment right onto the sheet with brushes and all kinds of water dispersed pigments very thickly. We use a lot of pigment in this process. And then we'll align that with our printing plates and basically putting the two together so we get the kind of image that we want. I mean, even it makes a 